Unchallenged good times produce weak bad and cultural decline. Cultural decline leads to hard times, and it's in the hard times that God begins to separate the wheat from the chaff, meaning the authentic believer from the cultural Christian. And in the end, those hard times do what? They once again produce strong men and strong women, and all of a sudden the cycle starts all over again. Listen, today I want to show you where I believe the United States, Europe, the West, and certainly Christians all around the world are adding God's refining process and what he's doing. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reason for Truth. You know, listen, truth comes first, but we always back it up with the reasons, but we're always in constantly learning. Because we stop learning, we stop teaching. That certainly stop teaching well. We want to make sure we not only learn well, we learn the truth. That's why reason for truth. All right, let's get started. Listen, according to a Gallup News article, entry March 25th, 2024, titled Church Attendance Has Declined in Most U.S. Religious Groups. Interesting, not just Christianity, by Jeffrey M. Jones. Now listen, the article states, it's being been written out, by the way, from Washington, D.C. Want to give some context there. I think that's important. And it says that as Americans observe Ramadan, and they prepare to celebrate Easter, like the way he put Ramadan first, right? Probably a political move, correct move. But Ramadan, prepare Easter and Passover. The percentage of adults who re report regularly attending religious service remains low. Three in 10 Americans send it, say that they attend religious services every week, 21% or almost uh, every week, 9% nine, 9 while 11% report attending church about once a month and 56% seldom, 25% right, or never church at all, 31%. Yeah, okay, it gives you an idea. That's across the religious spectrum. Now, Protestants and Christians in particular polled say that 30% attend every week, 13% almost every week, talking of Islam, Muslims, 28% every week, 10% almost every week, Catholic Church, every week, 10% almost every week, Judaism, Jewish people, 16% every week, 6% almost every week, Mormon Church, 21% every week, and 9% almost every week, Buddhism, to the Buddhist temple, 12% every week, it's 2% almost every week, Hinduism, Hindus from India, 7% every week, 6% almost every week. Atheism, or the nuns, right? Uh, no religion at all, 2% every week, obviously, understandable, 1% almost every week. The article points out that beyond Protestants, Catholics, and those with no religious affiliation at all, that other religion, gr religious groups represent about 2% or less of the population. So we're a very spiritual nation here in the United States. The article reports that nearly all faiths are seeing declines in regular church attendance and that church attendance will likely uh, continue to, to decline in the future. Eh, I don't know about that. Maybe that's true. I would say that that's true of... of cultural Christians, not authentic Christians, many which will cross over from cultural to, uh, to authentic, but some think they're authentic, will just become part of the cultural uh, landscape. But they'll continue to decline, is what they say in the future, given younger Americans with weaker attachments to religion. I think that's true on one hand, but I think young people are waking up because they see the corruption of their parents and their grandparents' generation. The question is, so what? Is this a bad thing? No, this trend is simply uncovering God separating the authentic Christian from the cultural Christian, a separation of the wheat from the chaff. Unfortunately for some churches, this might mean less, less tithe income or maybe smaller attendance, neither which churches like. The central point of today's entry is this. God is sifting, he's purifying this, the self-proclaiming Christians in America, I would say the cultural Christian in, in the West as well, separating the authentic follower from the false cultural people to, from the authentic believer before rebuilding an authentic Christ-centered conviction-based, biblically literate remnant of believers. We can also say that would be the authentic church. This is a mouthful, wasn't it? Listen, if we look more carefully, we're going to see that God has already started doing this even in many Islamic countries throughout the world. Speaking of Christianity, Christian growth, examples of explosive authentic Christian church growth, or Christian growth, I should say in general, includes countries such as Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, China, amongst others. When I say explosive growth of the church, it's really Christians because the, the church is not allowed to grow, so the Christians grow, right? And they meet in secret, it's the underground church. Sadly, 
Sadly, the West, especially in America, churches are filled with very soft, in most parts, not all churches. Down here in Charlotte, we have some great churches, great Christians. But I would say even here and across the country and throughout the West, that churches are filled with soft, cultural, uh, Christian teaching and mediocre, saltless Christian teaching and Christians as a result. Now the question is, how long do you think that Joel Olstein's church would last in Iran? Just ask you that question. Maybe how long would your church and the believers in your church would last in Iran? I think going back to the Olstein church, listen, not to mean to pick on them, but I don't think, I, I would imagine that the number would be quite a bit less, not everybody, than maybe perhaps more of a Bible teaching uh, church that's more, that's less on your best life is yet to come, right? More or less, listen, what's the Bible teaching us? All right, enough of that. Your answer will clarify the point for you. We as Christians in America, understandably, more often not take our religious freedom, access to unlimited Bible, biblical resources and, and Bibles and materials. We take all that for granted. And by the way, this, by the very nature, more, more cultural, there's more cultural Christians than authentic ones. And perhaps that's been the case throughout most of history. But a byproduct of all this is that morality fails. You see what do you mean? I was having this discussion with somebody at the YMCA the other day. I said, depends on whose morality you're talking about. But biblical morality begins to fail. And we want to know what made America great. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is and what it was and what it's going to be. It's God's moral absolutes as laid out in Scripture, right? Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't lie. All the, where they come, oh, Ten Commandments, by the way, yes. Okay, it's called common law for us, but it's also natural law and special revelation through the Bible. All right. As the culture becomes more unbiblical um, and untethered from God, the moral fabric of society has become more and more unraveled, as we, we see today, in the riots and the burning of cities and politicians just going, really, in evil ways. The established Christian moral and ethical standards that have made America great and kept this country together and growing has been rejected by most Americans. Remember when I was coming out dating my wife, to live with your girlfriend or boyfriend, even if it was before marriage, was considered living in sin. Not anymore. That's actually the norm today. Just as one example, now if you're living with somebody, you would love Jesus Christ, all I'd say is go to the Word, follow God's Word. You can't take one thing and not another. None of us are perfect, but you, none of us should be living in sin either, okay? This is the bottom line. Do I sound like, a, sound like old grandma? Well, I'm sorry. I guess it is a grandpa. I guess it is what it is. We're going to come under the fire and, and our faith and our, you know, listen, is going to come under challenge as the cultural norm over the last 30 or 40 years has begun to, to decay, you know, the whole conviction of Christian absolutes and moral teaching. Listen, as a result, Christians fall into apathy. Uh, to do FOTU, you ever heard of FOTU? F-O-T-U, fear of the unknown. And sadly, most of today's Christian body is unprepared to face the immoral, the evil attacks on Christianity and Christians in general, uh, and all mankind really due to their biblical illiteracy, and, uh, illiteracy and, and unwillingness to put biblical principles into action in our secular culture. And by the way, this goes for Christians, moderate Christians, cultural Christians. They don't like what the world's become, morally speaking, but yet, yet they don't want to take the moral convictions and follow the Bible. Why? You know, it's like saying, listen, I don't really want to follow the rule book, or not the rule book, but even the ways of God, because I have freedom. We all do. And then what happens is when nobody else follows them, they don't like it. They just don't want to follow them themselves. Well, it doesn't work that way. Luke 6.49 says this, But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Boom. Luke 6.49. What he's saying is, where are we building our foundation, our moral foundation? How about our governmental, ethical, our business world, corporate world, job, how we treat our neighbors and how we raise our children? It's great to make a lot of money and have dual incomes. The question is, is that at the expense of raising our own children or sending them off to the school system to do that job for us? It's one example. What about the secular flood of adversity, overrunning of Christianity? We see this quite a bit. When the flood of the secular world through government and culture and business rise, the cultural Christianity, the, the cultural Christian in general, fails in their faith. 
and what they consider to be an authentic faith, they can see it was not true. And so what did they do? More often than not, well, they have two choices. They could either get authentic, seek the Bible, or they usually just give it up or just call themselves, ah, I'm a Christian. They don't live by any of those edicts, don't read their Bible. But in many cases, those who falsely assume or assumed to be authentic Christians are not only shaken out, but also washed away into the godless cultural landscape, right, of that stream. And today's modern secular culture, that's the case. And sadly, in many, if not most cases, their faith diminishes and their lives often fall apart. You see such mental health in people. We got obesity at an all-time high. Mental health, suicide. It's absolutely horrible. Drug abuse. What is all, what's underneath all that? What? That's exactly what we're talking about today. So who are the wheat? We got the chaff and we got the wheat. Who's the wheat? Well, in the Bible parable, the wheat represents authentic believers in Jesus Christ, while the chaff represent those who either reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and the countless cultural Christians, those who think that being a good person gets you to heaven as opposed to trusting in Jesus Christ Lord, as Lord and Savior. It's paid the price on the cross, by the way. If we do our own works, think that gets us there. Well, we've just nullified that, hey, what Jesus died on the cross was good, but I can, I can get there on my own. That's not true. So seeking his words and his ways through the Bible is the real way to get there and trusting in Jesus Christ and the fact that his blood and his blood alone and our faith in that is what leads to eternal life. But in a nutshell, the chaff, going back to that, they are those who build their faith upon a rock. That's the difference between the wheat and the chaff, right? In contrary, the authentic Christian, the wheat, those who build their house on a firm foundation, digging into the Word of God and building his or her house by laying their foundation on the rock of God and His Word. When the floods of cultural compromise and immoral failures come, the house is not shaken because it's, it's been built well and on God's truth. Consider Luke 6, 46 to 49. It says this, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and then do not do what I tell you? That's a good question. 47 says, Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He's like a man who's built his house. He dug deep and laid foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, a stream broke against the house that he it could not be shaken. That's the house because it had been well built. But the one who hears does not do them. It's like the man who built his house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was what? Great. Boom. Luke 6, 46 to 49. Now wrapping this whole thing up in conclusion, it's a fact that throughout history, good times produce atrophy and human decline and uh, decline of, of moral, biblical, ethic, and morality, which leads to hard times. But it's those hard times that God begins to separate the wheat from the chaff, raises up a new remnant from the ashes. You see in the end that those hard times produce strong men and women of God. And I believe that we are entering into a cycle of hard times right now is clearly separating the wheat from the chaff. The numbers are in, folks. And according again to Gallup, the news, remember that March 25th, 2024 20, article called Church Attendance Has Declined in Most U.S. Religious Groups. It becomes clear that, that three in 10 U.S. adults attend religious services regularly. And as again, the Protestants, remember, only 30% attend every week, 13% every week. And t interestingly, Islam, Muslims only go to the mosque maybe 20% of the time and almost every week, 10%. This seems to indicate that the secular material driven culture in the West and throughout the world is affecting all religions. Even the Catholics only at 23%, right? As opposed to Protestants attend church every week, 10% almost every week. Going back to May 14th, 2019, the Christian Post wrote an article called God is separating the wheat from the chaff in our country, speaking of the United States, by David Hoffman, speaking of Jesus uh, and in Matthew 3.12, makes abundantly clear. It says, His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with fire. Listen, this particular verse really goes back to eschatology, has eschatological significance and application. It's valid on some level, though, what God's doing in the present in terms through application. I think, and our modern world, because God tends to do things according to basic principles, and so he repeats those things uh, in our lives and in cultural and the existence of the world. 
so, and beyond. So you see, many Christians find themselves in this dilemma today as having to face the truth of the authenticity of their own personal faith. All Christians today have to choose either stand up for Christ or stand down and get absorbed into the godless, secular culture. Those who are committed to Christ are committed to living righteously and commit to live out an actual pure, undefiled life according to the biblical principles and the Holy Spirit. So what I'm saying is that the, the line of separation has been drawn up, period. God is purifying His church in the United States, Europe, the West, and the world. God is revealing people's hearts. As He does this, He's separating the wheat from the chaff. We see in Matthew 3, 12, is occurring right before our very eyes with the wheat and the chaff. And as for you and I, we can be assured of one thing, and that is that that God is not finished with America and the West. He's just getting started. That's what I say. But He will not use a compromised Christian or church or a lukewarm Christian, period. God does not use the compromised, sinful, or egotistical, right, to display His power. It now becomes very clear that the current state of the church in America and Christians all across the country are finding themselves having to choose the wheat or the chaff. You with them or you're not? Look around. Can you see the wheat? Can you see the chaff? Can you see the wheat from the chaff? Open your eyes, you'll be surprised. Maybe upon even your own life. Take a look, see how we can all become better. All of us can. But there's a big difference between those who trust in Jesus Christ and those who just call themselves a Christian, culturally speaking. And that's what separates the wheat from the chaff. Let's not be the, uh, the non-believer. Let's be authentic in Christ. That's what's gonna change this world. I don't think, I don't think it's the end. I think it's the beginning. And, uh, and however time God gives us at the beginning, we'll see what God does with us. That's our business, to keep busy doing His work and mission while we're here. That's all I'll say. couple things. You really want to get equipped, go to equippedacademy.com, or you can go to christiananlinetraining.com. Some great online courses. But before you go, make sure you do a couple things. Share this with your friends. Number one, number two, like it. Boom, help us get algorithms up. And then, man, subscribe so you don't miss any of them. There's a little alert bell that even remind you on there. The so guys call that Goncio Sinistro. Bam! Italian Sicilian right hook. Hit that knock out the bell. Ding, 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 ding. And we'll see you over there. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. This is your Reason for Truth for today.